Hi guys, <clears throat> Dragon Arthur here. Today doing a rage rant video. I don't know if I'll get this on first fucking go because there's so much I had to write it down, but holy shit, let's get into this. First of all, Yu Gi Oh! does cost money for several reasons. Like, one, it's a card game, games cost money. Two, because it's a card game, you need to keep getting new cards, otherwise your old cards just don't keep up. And three, if that didn't happen, the people that made the card games wouldn't get money. Konami. Konami is a business. Businesses are built to make money. If you go to a lemonade stand and sell lemonade, you probably want money for your lemonade, and you probably want to make money back that you spent on the lemons to make lemonade. Just saying. Okay, so, who makes the most money? Probably Konami. And then stores make a bit of money when they sell boxes. And then vendors make a bit of money when they sell the cards they get from boxes. And then 12ies try to make some money. Which they get from their parents buying them cards for them. Um, that's generally how money in the game goes. Uh, if you're lucky, you buy a card which is $25 and fucking three weeks later it's $100 like I did with Dante. Or if you're even more lucky, you buy one booster pack and you pull... Tour guide when it come came out two hundred dollars, but that's exactly what I'm trying to get into. Um, this the, the fucking prices at the moment for this guy aren't too incredibly bad, but that one there, fucking ridiculous. Half this set is a joke with how much things cost. So I did a little bit of working out. I'm going to go into this. Um, <laughs> to say, why the fuck would you spend so much money on this deck? First of all, um, Trishula at the moment, sorry, not Trishula, Brian Ack at the moment. This is checking up on TCG Player. I, now, I don't care what the fuck bloody card database you use, fucking Yu Gi Oh! prices, TCG Player, Troll and Toad, they're all pretty much the same. eBay, whatever the fuck. eBay's usually a lot more though. Um, but I'm going to TCG play because it's probably the best, in my opinion, because it actually compares stores and not 12Es trying to sell cards online. So, if you can see on my phone here, I don't know if it's going to work out, Brianac is currently like $175, $180. is $170 there in the median price on TCG Player. Today's date is, let's double check this, like the 17th of fucking February. It's like not even a week after this has come out. It was like $60 on day release and then it's like a hundred and... It's almost triple that now. But for argument's sake, let's say 170 Okay. First thing to note, that's American price. Um, when I calculate how much the American is to Australian, uh, let's put it this way. It's about, you'll get about a dollar twenty-five or a dollar thirty or something like that. So let's say one point two five. You're paying about that much in Australia for a hundred and seventy dollar American card. So <laughs> for another argument's sake, I could be arguing this in Australian, but I'm not. I'm gonna argue this in your American currency, because most viewers are American. Um why the fuck would you pay $170 for one card that you need three of to play the deck? Why the fuck would you do that? Okay, Brianax pull rate, Brianax pull rate, I actually should be saying the name correctly, not Brianax or Brianax. It's a uh, Brianax as in cryonic because it's ice, so it's actually Brianax. Um, I don't give a shit. Brianic's pull rate is about one in four boxes, along with Volcaris, your Senju die, uh, Maya Senju Dieback, and Trishula. Each of them have about a one in four pull rate. So roughly on average, if you buy four boxes, you should be getting one of each. And I've seen people that have uh, posted stats of what's been pulled in 72 boxes that's been opened, and that's about right. When you calculate out how much of each is pulled out, and you do the maths and average things out, you get about one of each in the average of four boxes. Now, Dante's pull rate is one in about ten boxes. 
What did Dante get to at its highest price? 120 for arguably the best deck in the last two, two formats, almost three formats. Easily the best deck in the last three formats. And then it sat around 100 for most of the time. And now it's dropping tremendously because of this deck coming out. Right? A 1 in 10 box pull rate. So you got to pay $1,000. Well, let's, let's say American prices for a box is $80. You have to pay $800 to pull one. Sure, you got other cards you can sell. But the next most expensive card in the set, I can't even fucking remember by now. It's too, so long ago. Was like fucking forty dollars or fifty dollars. Like, generally, you wouldn't make a lot of your money back, but if you pull a Dante, you make a lot of money. Okay, one in four boxes get a hundred dollar card. Sorry, one in ten boxes get a hundred dollar card. Why the fuck is this one in four boxes to get an almost two hundred dollar card? What the fuck logic does that make? Again, again. BAs were the top deck for the last three formats. At least two or three formats. Right? <laughs> Why is this deck, which is obviously now the best deck in this format, so much more than the last one? I don't understand that. Okay. Um, I'm going to also work out some of the other prices that I worked out earlier for you. So let's say you pay $80 for a box. Um, with... All the one and four rate of pulling a Trish, Falk, Brio, or Maya send you die back. Trishula at $170. Um, Volk at $65. Tr uh, sorry, Trishula at $45. Brianak at $170. Sorry, I keep getting the names mixed up for some reason. Brianak $170. Trish $45. Volkris $65. And die back about $20. Okay, so when you work that out, that is $300. You are buying $320 worth of boxes for an average chance of getting $300 worth of cards directly back. That's just those four. I'm not even including the rest of the cards, like the fact that you're going to get two to three vanities every box. And vanities not too long ago were $100, $100 a fucking playset, which is why I never got them. Um, not only that, you've got Dwellers, which used to be $20 each. Um, you have Manjus, which were going to 5 to $10 each, depending on what one you got and how lucky and how cheap they were. You got Preparations of Right, which were $25 each. Let's not even fucking start and roll the Creed or Jin, Ritula, Relisa, and all this other fucking shit that's in the fucking set, okay? You are easily making your money back. The fact that it was $100 to get fucking Vanities two weeks ago, and now you get this, and you'll get almost that fucking playset in one box. Why do people fucking complain about card prices? Wait, hang on. I'm complaining about card prices because it's fucking stupid. $100 for these, this playset, which will now come in this. And then you still have more cards you want to try to sell for another fucking almost $200. Why? You're already getting your value's worth. It's like, oh, this card's no longer $100 for the playset. It's now $15. Fuck off. Like, okay, okay. Let's go into why you'd want to build this deck. Okay, so in YCS Tacoma, 22 out of the top 32 were Necros. The hell of a lot less BAs this time, and hell of a lot less um, Clifford's. Now let's get one thing straight. That's because a lot of the top players, a lot of the best players, probably would have gotten rid of their Burning Abyss decks because they would have realized, hey, this deck's probably better and would have used that money to fund them buying Necros, okay? The other thing to note is that just because you have a Burning Abyss or Necros deck doesn't mean you're going to be good with it. So the people that were good with Burning Abyss now have Necros instead. So there goes some of the really good players and from who would be playing Bunny Abyss because they're now playing Necros. So that probably accounts for some of the top 32. Um, that's one thing to remember. What else? What else did I write down? <clears throat> ah, yes. So 
why the fuck would you spend six hundred fucking dollars on this deck when you're not going to make anything out of it? Unless, of course, you are one of these people that are going to these events and actually fucking winning. What are you making out of the six hundred fucking dollars you're spending on this? What you go to your locals every week, ten spend, spend fucking, blah, 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 blah. spend fucking. $10 and win like $20 of boosters and pull like $5 worth of cards. Ah, oh, congratulations. Right? I know people that come to my locals, have a fucking $20 fucking deck, come last, pull one booster and open fucking Volcarus. That's what happened to my locals last fucking night. Right? What are you really fucking winning out of that? The only thing you're going to fucking win is if you go to a fucking YCS or a bloody... Go, get first to the fucking regionals, maybe you win a box. Congratulations, the person who judges the regionals gets a fucking free box. Well, not free, they actually work for it, but... You know what I'm trying to fucking say? It doesn't cost them $600 to make a fucking deck. <sighs> okay, so, the other thing is... Our prices here in Australia go off American prices, okay? America has a lot more YCSs over America than Australia does. You know how many Australia has? They had two last year. They were the first two they had in Australia. They were at opposite ends of the year and they're both in Sydney. Sydney's pretty easy to get to if you're on the east side of Australia, but if you're in Perth, you're pretty fucked. Okay? Probably not as far as going from Anaheim to fucking New York. I don't know. I don't know fucking American geography. But still, America has a hell of a lot more YCSs and a hell of a lot more chance of making fucking money off the game by winning if you're actually fucking good at it. If you're a filthy casual, well, why would you spend $600 on a deck and you're never going to fucking make that back, right? Unless you sell it. I know people that bought BA decks, right? They buy the best fucking deck of the format with all the cards the best fucking pros are using and they lose out to fucking me playing Noble Knights to them because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Why the fuck would you buy that deck? Buy a deck that matches your skill level. Not your bloody budget. Not your wallet. Fucking Christ. If you're shit using the deck, get a cheaper deck, learn how to play the card game, then go to more expensive decks. I win with fucking Noble Knights. I top almost fucking every locals I go to. With Noble Knights against BAs and fucking Clifford's. Clifford's is what usually beats me. Because of skill drain. Right? I would have a reason why to buy a tier 1 deck that costs fucking $600. But I won't. Because I'm not that fucking stupid. Because YCS's in Australia come like once a year. <laughs> well, they've only had two. And they're basically once a year. So, what do you win? from winning a YCS. Okay, if you come first, you win a netbook. It's pretty good, maybe a thousand dollars there. You win a YCS ultra rare prize card, which last year was Ascension Sky Dragon. So the ultras could sell for maybe one and a half grand. So it's good, two, two and a half grand there. This is Australian prices, of course. American would probably be a lot less. Um, you win travel and everything to the World Championship qualifiers. Mm, that's, that's good, that's good. Um, and yeah, you get pretty well if you come first, out of what, 650, 850 people, a thousand fucking people, yeah, yeah, this just increases your chances a bit more, again, if you're a bad player, having a $600 deck doesn't mean you're gonna fucking win, you know one of the guys at YCS Sydney did last year, top four, okay, this guy's in the top Fucking four. What does he do? He brings out BLS and taxes his opponent's construct. That fucking happened at YCS Sydney in the top four. This guy could have just banished construct and won the next fucking turn. Instead, he lost because he attacked into it. Having a fucking $500 card or a $5 card does not make you any better at the fucking game. Okay, what happens if you come second place at a YCS Sydney? You get a 32 gigabyte tablet, you get a super rare version of whatever the first player got, so a super rare Ascension Sky Dragon would sell for about a grand, and a 300, uh, 32 gigabyte tablet. Uh, maybe $300? Okay, so you get about 15, uh, $1,300. That's, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. Third place, um, you get a mini tablet, so it's about $200 or something, and 
the same card the third place, uh, second place got. That's nice. Fourth place, you get a mini tablet, you get 250 bucks, it's cool. Um, anyone lower than that, you're like a booster box. Okay, cool, booster box, because that's not fucking hard to get. And you get a top 32 game mat, which will sell for about $100, if you want to sell that. Cool. What does everyone else get that fucking went to the tournament? Okay, you didn't get anything extra if you don't get top 32, but anyone else does. You get a play mat and you get some boosters. Doesn't matter what deck you're running, you get a play mat and boosters. Unless you get top 32, you won't get any of this shit. If there's a hundred people that go to YCS fucking Tacoma playing Necros, and only 20 of them get to the top, or only 32 if all of them did, but only 22 did, and I don't know how many Necros are actually being played there because I've looked up those stats yet, you have a shit ton of people that have paid 600 fucking dollars for the deck, or more, and they still haven't fucking topped. And they still haven't earned anything off of it. So they spent 600 fucking dollars for this deck and they've got nothing off of it. Right? Unless you're winning, you're not making anything off this fucking card game. I'm sure you can have fun with it, but still, I don't know why you spent 600 dollars just to play the fucking deck. I need to fucking tie it. Oh, I should have done this fucking house ring. Okay, so that's most of that covered. Um, I, I just, I just don't understand why someone would pay $600 for a deck if they're not going to get something out of it. You know what $600 fucking dollars buys me? That buys me a fucking trip or a holiday with my girlfriend almost fucking anywhere I want to go. Right? That buys me a weekend fucking being pampered. That buys me fucking six weeks worth of food. Why would I just dump that much money into a fucking deck if I'm not going to get anything out of it? Pro players spend that much money for a more likely chance of getting these fucking prizes I just said earlier. Because if they get these fucking prizes, they sell them for two fucking grand and then they sell the deck for 600 bucks. Or they keep the deck, they win more tournaments and get more money. Like Hoban probably does. Right? And if you're not doing that, why the fuck do you have this? You're not making money off it, it's going to depreciate in value. Brian X is going to get limited, something's going to get fucking banned. The deck's not going to be as good. It's going to lose power like BAs has, have. Why? Why would you spend that fucking much? I don't understand. I don't understand why you'd spend $600 if you're not going to get the $600 fucking dollars back by what you win and then sell the deck for $600 and actually make something out of it. Don't forget all the time you spend actually playing the card game. I'd rather spend one Brian Axe worth of fucking money and make it your Senju deck, which can still top up my locals. Which can still do decent out of fucking regionals. Someone won fucking the recent regionals with Battery Man. The deck's probably 50 fucking bucks. Minus the vanity's emptiness. Seriously, Battery Man won a regionals. That's less than one fucking Bryanac. Ugh. Last thing I want to fucking rant about. I get this all the fucking time. I went to my fucking locals the other day and I got this same fucking thing. Okay, if you can't fucking read this, get some fucking glasses on. See the top one there? See that? Sorry about the scribble underneath. It says spiritual beast. Note how spiritual beast has ritual beast in it? It counts as ritual beast monster. Note how ignoble knight has noble knight in it? It counts as noble knight monster. Note how XX saber has X saber in it? it counts as a fucking X saber. Okay? If your card says, target one ritual beast monster you control, you have a fucking ritual beast monster. If I have my Yosenju die back in my fucking pendulum zone, and I have Yosenju secret move set, which says, as long as you have a face up Yosenju card, and all monsters, if any, are Yosenjus, you can activate this and it's basically stop fucking anything. Right? Okay, good. Mayo Senju has your Senju in it. Just like these fucking things have their fucking words in it for those fucking decks. Why the fuck would Konami make a fucking card which can't even work with its own deck? <coughs> fuck.